All right, so good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm currently with my friend Bradley here, who is another ST guy. Uh, we found each other on the internet. Basically, he's going to help me first turn over the uh, rear motor mount that I put on my car. Remember, I went to the dealership, and the reason that I bought the Mountain rear motor mount is because I felt it had the highest quality. Um, but I also liked that Ford was going to warranty it. You saw the video and some of the comments were saying, hey, I think your motor mount is upside down because the emblem is upside down. And I thought it was just part of the, uh, it, it was from the 16 model we were thinking, right? It was uh, yeah. something about the 16 model is different than the 14 or something like that. I thought the 13, 14 fit differently. But yeah. That's not the case. So it's not the case and we are going to uh, take that motor mount and flip it. Uh, it's supposed to decrease the NVH in the car, which I hope it does because when I run the AC it, it is kind of annoying to be totally honest with you. Uh, so it should uh, decrease that and we're also going to replace uh, the recirculation valve. So we've already re removed the passenger side tire. If you see, it's extremely hot under the car and it's just hot outside in general, but doing some, uh, well, learning how to do some work on my own for once. So let's get started. So I'm just going to get the sizes. So what's, what size are we working with here? 16 deep socket okay. for the, uh, the bolt that holds the actual mount in place and it holds it to the bracket itself. Okay. And then you got a couple of 13s here. The 13s hold this bracket off to the side. Um, okay. I think it's just for stability purposes. Yeah. Um, I've heard of some people taking this off. I wouldn't take anything off. Yeah. That wasn't meant to be taken off and left off of the car. Yeah, I mean, I think it's all there for a reason. But so. Very clean under here. Yeah, so there's the logo. So the logo is right side up here. So it needs to be upside down? Yep, it needs to be pointing down towards the ground. Huh. Yeah. Weird. I had some problems with it myself. Um, the first time I, I put it in, I installed mine upside down as well because it was the only way I could get it in. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had issues. That's what we had at the dealership. We had a bunch of issues with it. Yeah, so I went online, got with some guys, you know, on Focus ST, mm -hmm. and Oregon, gave me some tips, and sure enough, I mean, I've done rear motor mounts on other cars in the past, but um, this one is a little bit different. Um, the way the bracket is and the way that it's mounted up is just a little bit different. What do you think about the NVH with the AC on? You know, they say these things break in over time. Yeah. And in my experience, um, that is the case. Because with the AC off, I got no issue. But sometimes with it on, I get, it's just kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah same here. And but at the same time, everything, you know, you have no wheel hop. It's so... Your so shifts are much more precise. Yeah. I think that's the thing that I notice the most. Um, and, you know, if you turn... Um, ESC off and you're just in sport mode, right. whatever the case is, um, then yeah, your tires just spin, um, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I, I mean, versus the whole car shaking. Right. It, sounds, it feels awful. Yeah, exactly. So, some of these parts are going to be really hot when they come down, so. All right. And I think this thing is going to just possibly fall right down here any second. What's that that's going to fall? Um, this whole bracket here is just. Oh, yeah. Metal, yeah. There it is. Nice. And it's just hot as all hell. <laughs> yeah, it's 100 plus under this car. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. 110, 120. A pair of gloves, but I couldn't find them. Golf gloves. Red yeah. gloves. <laughs> foot Joy would like that. Yeah, if we rep some Foot Joys in here right now, I think they'd be okay with it. So we need a ratcheting wrench for. Yeah. But if you just have a regular wrench. And you have to constantly pull it off and get it back into this space it is oh it's yeah a pain in the ass. That alone would take 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's a good tip. Good pro tip. So for everyone out there, that Mountain logo has to be upside down. That is correct. Okay. At least some of these parts have cooled off a little bit. Just below burning your hand. Just below scolding. <laughs> It's amazing to me how easy you just got that in there because it was a whole pro. I mean, he was like hanging on the car at one point, <laughs> trying to edge something in there, and 
way more strenuous than what we're doing. What worked best for me was getting all of these in first. You gotta, everything's got to find a home. Yeah. When you're doing any kind of mounts, um, sometimes you have to torque the engine one way or the other. And if these things aren't threaded in right, you're going to strip something. And it's going to strip something either in your block or your side of the side of your transmission or something important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... So just kind of loosely get them in there first, let everything uh, settle. settle, and then tighten it. Yep, exactly. Um, and then with this mount specifically, mm -hmm. I know that there was a problem with this mount where um, w a, the bolts only go in one way or the other because it was only fitting one way or the other. Uh huh. So that's another reason why I try to just keep everything nice and loose and get everything yeah. at home before it uh, before we start tightening. And when you did this the first time, did he know that the the logo was supposed to go down? No. He didn't? He figured just because... Of the way that it lined up. Yep. He just thought the logo should be facing up and that was that. I, like I said, we didn't read any. We had no... He was like, nah, I got it. They don't send you anything with it. They don't. But there's stuff online. There's PDFs and stuff that Mountain Tomb provides you can for everything. Yeah. Wish I had a way to... I need four hands right now. I mean, I got two <laughs> extra. Okay, I've lost six pounds since laying under here. I know. You almost need one of those, uh, like, rubber hammers. I have one, but I don't want to take any threads off of this Oh, thing. That, yeah. Okay. So we're looking at the torque wrench now. One of the things at the dealership we didn't do was torque this to spec. For the bigger ones, it's 60 foot-pounds. I did 65. Okay. Just to, you know, just be, just be extra safe, yeah. Side. Um, for the smaller ones, it's 30 foot. Um, I looked it up online. They actually give it to you in nanometers. Okay. Um, but I, I just did the conversion. Yeah. And it came out to roughly 60 and 30. So that's what I went with. When I asked the tech, he was like, I'm like, so what, what do we need to get this to? He's just like, tight. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all you got to do is get this thing. Fully tight, and then you get it to one foot, and that's it. That's it. Huh. That's 60 foot pounds right there. And I'll be honest with you, most people over tighten everything. Yeah. Um, which I guess over tight's better than under tight, but some things you don't want to over tighten. These are 30. Okay. Uh, which honestly, these by hand aren't nearly as big of a deal as the bigger ones that are actually um, holding the mount onto the chassis of the car. That is going to be a 19. 19? Yeah. A 19 that. deep socket. There it is. Nice. You want me to start this dryer again? Are they, are they dry? No. Yeah, you can start it. Okay. This one I would have done ahead of time, but mm -hmm. that bolt was in the way. So right, because he had it in the wrong way, right? Well, no, it's just because these two are so close to one another yeah. that it's really hard to get in and do one or the other. These are just a 30. These these on the outsides are just 30, so okay. um, just about as, as tight as you can get it by hand without really like torquing on it too hard is fine. And now we just put these extra braces on there. Okay, so we're just finishing up here, and uh, Bradley was saying this back, what is it, the back bolt or the back nut? It's just a nut that holds uh, the bracket in place. But okay. If you don't do it first, then it you can't get every all these other ones set correctly, so you'll end up with a bunch of stuff that's tight, and then you can end up with a gap in the back there. Right. And so then, that's it's almost like when you're tightening a tire if you don't do it in a five star pattern. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. And then you can end up bending the bracket or something stupid. Yeah. Um, and then you, I usually I just left this loose last time, and I got these tight up here first because they're slack there. Okay. Um. Pretty much done here. Cool. Well, that took us half the time it took a Ford Tech. It's obvious to the, to the even to the naked eye, it's sitting nice and straight here now. Yeah. Whereas before, um, I don't I don't know if you can tell, but it's got the cutouts here on the bottom. The okay. top is relatively flat. Um, it's a little angled here, but it's got the cutouts down oh, here. Oh, I see. Which yeah. give it just about a quarter of an inch, maybe a half an inch um, raise to yeah. it. Um, and that 
allows it to keep that angle. It, so it's nice and straight. It's parallel with the chassis of the car. Yeah. Um, whereas before it was sort of it was slumping a little down. bit. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's the first thing that I noticed. The other thing that I noticed was at the top, the piece that actually touches uh, where it bolts up. Yeah. Um, it the, there's a lip that sticks out by maybe a, I don't know like an eighth of an inch. Okay. But I think that lip is what minimizes the NVH. Really? It, yeah, because before the whole mount was flat with the chassis to car, versus now there's a little bit of a lip there. So it gives it a tiny, right, tiny little, little gap, just right. a, just enough. As opposed to it being like flush and just and everything's every just, vibration is coming through the exactly, exactly. exactly. Okay, cool. So I, that's my theory behind it. I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. That makes sense to me, though. I mean, we'll be able to tell uh, when I'm done. When I'm gonna drive it. Let's pull all this out and then cut the splash guard, whatever you want to call yeah. it. All right, so that concludes the. Uh, reinstallation of the rear motor mount uh, again that I got at Mountune. Uh, Bradley lost six or seven pounds of body sweat <laughs> under the car and his shirt changed colors while doing so. So appreciate that uh, sweat he just put into it. But um, so that is all fixed. So again that's, that should reduce a little bit of the NVH and now it's just done correctly. It's just good peace of mind to have. The next thing uh, we're going to be doing is the uh, recirculation valve. So that's, that's going to be in the next video. I'll just try to chop these up for the, so they're uh, short for everyone to watch. But you're going to see Bradley in the next video too. Again, appreciate your help on Probably. this because uh, without you, I would just it'd be a sad situation. All right, so I do want to do some uh, final thoughts on what we just did. I was able to just drive the car and get a feel for. Uh, the NVH, and if you're not sure what I'm saying with NVH, it's noise vibration harshness. Um, I, I didn't know what uh, that was when I first saw it, so just to help you out. With the, running the AC on, when I first put in that rear motor mount, I got it done in November. So out here, I'm not running AC pretty much for several months during that time of the year. You just don't need it. NVH, when you have that, is very, it's not much at all. It's, it's great. When we got into summertime, that is when I'm using the AC a lot and the vibration at times was pretty harsh and that is because it was installed incorrectly. I think Bradley's explanation of how the rear motor mount sits under the car, it's not exactly flush. Now it's sitting flush with the chassis um, and it reduces the vibration when the air conditioning is on. So I just think that's a big deal. Uh, it's so much better now. Um, and I kind of felt bad because not running the AC, I wasn't giving you an honest uh, review of how uh, that vibration was until I found out it was too late in the middle of the summer. So uh, we now got that all fixed up uh, and here's what's coming up next in the video. So we have this uh, recirculation valve. That's the part number for it if you want to look up on Mountain exactly what I'm doing. So we got that. Uh, we have this uh, charge pipe that I'm upgrading. Increases the airflow by 39%. You'll notice under uh, the car, there, there's some baffles, uh, like right here on the stock charge pipe that are a little restrictive. So that's gonna uh, help turbocharger response. And then we also have these, the exhaust isolator kit uh, for the Focus ST. So these are a little stronger than what comes on the car. Plus you get this little extra one, and I'll show you where that fits uh, once we do the install. So that's what's coming up, some, uh, some exciting upgrades, I think. And, and again, it's nothing major, uh, but these are more to get the most out of a stock car so increasing turbo response getting the exhaust mounted properly and firmly how it should um, and then this the recirc valve is something that is known to fail on focus sts it's more if you're pushing higher than stock power uh, which i'm not uh, but it's more like preventative maintenance um, so we should be good there so thank you all for the support thank you for watching and i'll see you soon